Our Gospel reading this morning comes from the Gospel according to John. We are reading from the 14th chapter, and this morning we are reading, reading verses 23 to 27. So let us attend to God's word for us on this final Sunday of Advent. Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you please pray with me? Lord God, you have promised your Holy Spirit to us. And so we pray that the Spirit would be with us now. That you, Spirit, would guard our ears, that only what is from you might be heard, that you would guard my tongue, that I may speak what you would have me speak, and that in it all you would be glorified. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So it's almost Christmas. And this year, Christmas is a little different, isn't it? And I wonder what it is that you long for at Christmas. We all have this, this vision of the ideal Christmas, and we may know that's not going to happen this year, but we still have that longing for it, don't we? And I'm willing to guess that for most of us, except perhaps for the very young, our deepest longing at Christmas is not for presents. It's not for that special meal of rib roast or lamb or uh, whatever it is that you have at Christmas. I think what we mostly long for is gathering together with our family, a sense of being at home. That Norman Rockwell-esque kind of gathering around the fire and singing or sharing stories and just connecting with one another. At Christmas, we long for that sense of home. That song that Andy Williams, I think, song, of There's No Place Like Home for the Holidays. When we think of Christmas, that's often what we think of. And I think when we have that longing for, for home at Christmas, what we're, what we're really longing for is peace. That peace that, that Jesus talks about, that peace that Paul talks about, that peace that is throughout Scripture. In the passage we've been looking at throughout Advent, we have looked at what Isaiah had to say about the coming Messiah. And that to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And that peace that, that the Messiah, that the Christ is Prince of, is not just an absence of conflict. So often that's what we think of when we think of peace. It's been a long day, the kids have been riled up, or work has been difficult, or the news cycle is just disturbing, and, and we go home and we just want some peace and quiet. To be away from the, the craziness, the difficulties, an absence of that anxiety. Or we think of peace as the absence of, of war. 
The bombs have stopped falling, the bullets have stopped flying, and we're at peace. But the word from Scripture comes from that, that Hebrew word shalom, which is so much more than the absence of anything. Shalom, that promise that we have from God is, is a sense not only of the absence of strife and anxiety, but it's, it's a sense of wholeness, of well-being, of things being right. A sense of being whole, where we belong, and things are as they should be. Peace, shalom, in Scripture is not just the absence of problems and difficulties, but that presence of, of something longed for. And it carries with it that, that idea of prosperity. Theologian and, and Hebrew scholar Ellen Davis says that shalom is fullness, completeness, so it's well-being. It's prosperity, not in a cheap, making a profit sense of possibility but in a deep sense of my well-being is integrated with the well-being of all around me, human and non-human, and the earth on which our lives depend. Shalom has that sense. Oh, I forgot to turn my mic on. My apologies. But shalom is that, that deep sense of, of belonging and fullness, completeness, prosperity. You know, it's intriguing, I learned not too long ago, that when Leonard Nimoy, who played Spock on Star Trek, when he came up with that, that Vulcan greeting and he would say, live long and prosper, by that he, he made this, this symbol, okay, which is actually based on the Hebrew letter Sheen, the first letter of Shalom. Yeah. That every time Spock was wishing live long and prosper, he was saying to somebody, Shalom. Peace be with you. Yeah. That is what, what we are promised. And it comes through Jesus. Yeah. Our peace, our prosperity, our, our being together, our feeling at home is something that, that Christ gives us. Jesus says, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching, my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Our home with God. Our home with the one who made us and loves us and has redeemed us. That is peace, that is shalom. And as we are with our God, yeah. there is that, that sense of, of rightness. Because that's where, where shalom comes from. It's being right, first of all, with God. Which is why Paul says, we have been justified, that is, made right. We've been made right through faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Being at peace with God, being, being comfortable with God, being at home with God is something we have because of Jesus. Because of Jesus, we know how much God loves us. Because of Jesus, we know what God is like. Because of Jesus, we are right with God. There's a sense of, of wholeness and rightness there that is so much more than not having God angry with us. Okay? So much more than a ticket into heaven. We have, we have peace with God. Okay? And because of that, we also can have peace with ourselves. Okay? When we come to confession, it's not with anxiety about, oh, I have to tell God something he didn't know. We come to God with a sense of, of shalom because God knows us. And as we're right with God, we can be honest with ourselves about who we have been and who we are. 
And we can do so with that, that comfort. Yeah. So that when we're right with God, we are, we are comfortable in our own skin. Yeah. And when we are right with God and right with ourselves, then we can be right with our neighbors. We can be at peace in the sense that we're, we're doing well together. It is that, that reality that I don't need to compare myself to my neighbor. I don't need to be in competition with them. I don't need to uh, apologize for who I am. I can be me because I know God and therefore I can love my neighbor without that strife between us. And so our, our neighborliness, our relationships can be life-giving, can be shalom-filled, peaceful. The peace that we have with God, with ourselves, and with, uh, with one another okay, is not something that, that necessarily comes easily, though. Notice what Paul says. He says, not only do we boast in the hope of the glory of God, but we also glory in our suffering. We glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us. It doesn't put us to shame. Paul is reminding us that in the, the struggles that we have, they are leading us to that peace with God and peace with ourselves and peace with one another because of Jesus. Because Jesus uses all those challenges we face to bring good, to build us into the kind of people who are peacemakers, who bring shalom into the lives of those around us. You know, this year, we probably all have a little different perspective on, <laughs> on suffering. It's been a hard year. And as we come to Christmas, it's, it's, it's with that recognition of all the things that have been challenging this year. Paul tells us that suffering produces perseverance. And boy, have we needed that this year the wearing of masks, the social distancing, the being separate from each other, not being able to go to restaurants. We've had to persevere for the good of one another, for our own good. But Paul tells us that that perseverance makes us better. It produces character. And out of that character, then we have hope. Hope that what we're dealing with now won't be what we always have. Hope that we can be with one another more closely again, that we can be at home with one another. That that, that shalom we are promised will be there. That it hasn't disappeared because of a virus, because of economic woes, because of political strife. Because that peace doesn't come from us, it comes from God. And Jesus is the one who gives that through his own suffering, okay? through his work on the cross. Okay? He has experienced all the depths of, of trauma that we have earned by who we are and what we've done so that we don't have to, so that we can be right and experience the shalom that he brings, that he deserves. And he tells us how to get there. You see, not only are we uh, those who have peace from God, yeah, but Jesus reminds us in the Beatitudes, blessed are the peacemakers. We as disciples of Jesus are called to be those who make peace who make shalom. Not just as, as people who minimize conflicts, okay, but those who bring a sense of wellness and wholeness and prosperity to the world around us. 
And Jesus tells us where that comes from. He says, anyone who loves me will obey my commands, will obey my teaching. And what is it that Jesus commands us? To love the Lord our God with all our hearts, souls, minds, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. To seek shalom with God and self and neighbor. By looking at Jesus and walking that path. So often at this season, we talk about peace. We sing about peace, let there be peace on earth. And it's worthwhile remembering that that peace is so much more than just a a quiet, so much more than just solace, so much more than just an absence of strife. It is a fullness of what life is meant to be. It is being home. And it is the one who brings that, the Prince of Peace, whose birth we are about to celebrate. So let us make peace, let us pass the peace, pass shalom to one another. So may the peace of God be with you all. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.